Shalom, shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And peace and salutations to the elect. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father, and his son's name is Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. And the nation of Israel consists of the so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Okay? And uh, through the Spirit, you know, according to uh, 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, we'll start off with that. The Spirit of the Lord has been endued upon particular men to break down the scriptures in sincerity and in truth. Okay? This is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. And when you consider all of the entities that once ruled all of the empires, all of the great, uh, you know, enterprises that were set up by various different nations over, you know, the past hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, going back to, to biblical times. They've all fallen, you know, they've all they've all gone into pretty much a, a part, a portion of history that, you know, we can't even relate to because they, they're not here anymore. And the same thing is going to happen to America. OK, now we're speaking wisdom of the most high. And these videos and these lessons are for the edification or the building up of the elect. OK. And so we're not speaking wisdom of this world. We're not speaking uh, about, um, you know, things pertaining to uh, how to forge yourself in, in this society and to perpetuate uh, this society's agenda. OK, we're speaking to you about things that are focusing on what the Lord wants us to focus on, which is him. OK, in the coming of his son, Yahweh Shai. Now, uh, going back to the, to the scripture that I had pulled up in Isaiah, this lesson is going to be going into pretty much remembering your first love, you know, which is this truth. And when we consider that the Lord set up Yahweh Shai for us to get these, these, this understanding that we have in these last days, it's a humbling, it's a humbling thing, you know, and uh, the Lord called a particular people by his name. He called a, he called a, a, a particular people by his name for them to be representatives of him on the earth. OK. And so this is Isaiah 54 and five for thy maker is thine husband. Yahweh of hosts is his name and thy redeemer, the holy one of Israel. The power of the whole earth shall he be called. Now, when you go into secular, what Esau calls secular history, which essentially is just history that uh, is not contained in the Bible, but history, the Bible uh, contains history. OK, so there's there's various uh, things that, you know, have been found various pieces of pieces of writing, you know, on various uh, different tablets from from old civilizations to confirm a lot of the things that the Bible talks about. Okay. But the Bible is, it, you know, stands by itself because it's written with the uh, inspiration of the most high. Okay. Now it says, um, it says that thy maker is thine husband. So we are likened unto the, the wife of Yahweh Hashem Yahshai. We're likened unto the the spouse of the Lord, because we we were we, we were called by His name as a nation. <laughs> okay, and so verse six it says, "For the Lord Yahweh hath called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, and a wife of youth, when thou wast refused, said thy power." Okay, and back in the ancient days. A woman knew that her sole purpose was to was to get married and, and have children, you know, as far as the as far as the the life goal. You know, people talk about goals and all this. The goal of, of a woman 
was to uh, bring forth seed or excuse me, bring forth uh, a child. OK, and if they didn't do that, they pretty much felt use, uh, useless. OK, and uh, you can read this in uh, in first Samuel, which we'll get a little bit of it to prove that. OK, this is a uh, first Samuel chapter one, verse eight. It says, then said El Kana, her husband to her, Hannah. And Hannah was the woman that did not uh, wasn't able to bear any children. But her, but her, but she had a, a you know, a, a, a sister wife. Okay, pretty much. That 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 had children. When you read up, you know, so she was barren ultimately. And so it says, then said Elkanah her husband to her, Hannah, why weepest thou, and why eatest thou not, and why is thy heart grieved? Am I not better to thee than ten sons? So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in, in Shiloh and after they had drunk. Now Eli, the priest, sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of Yahweh, And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto Yahweh and wept sore. Why was she why was she in bitterness of soul? Because she wasn't able to uh, bear. OK, she wasn't able to bear seed. She felt, uh, again, pretty much. Like she was useless. Now, going back to this uh, scripture in Isaiah 40, 54 and 6, it says, Yahweh hath called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, just as Hannah was felt like she was forsaken, which she wasn't. You know, ultimately, the Lord, uh, if you read the account, the Lord, uh, you know, uh, uh, gave her a child, you know, allowed her to conceive. Um, and, and she and she bore Samuel, who ended up being a great prophet in Israel. All right. But the Lord called us as a woman that was pretty much had no husband, you know. A woman that was grieved, a woman that was lowly in spirit. Us as a, as a nation, Israel, think about how we came into into a nation. We came into become into a nation by being in captivity under the Egyptians, the story of Exodus. Okay. And so the Lord, the Lord, uh, pretty much created humble begin beginnings for, uh, for us to remember him at all times. It's a pretty humbling thing to know. Oh yeah. How, 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 how is Israel a, a nation again? Oh yeah. We were, we were pretty much, uh, made in captivity. Ezekiel chapter 20 verse five. It says, and say unto them, thus saith Yahweh, in the day when I chose Israel and lifted up mine hand unto the seed of the house of Jacob, I made myself known unto them in the land of Egypt. You see that? So the Lord made himself known unto us because what did he tell uh, Moses when uh, the, the, the spirit of the Lord uh, was in the burning bush? He said, up until this time, roughly paraphrasing, I was known uh, by, by you know, I was known as uh, Al Shadia or El Shaddai, but the, but the pr correct pronunciation is Al Shadia. Okay, terrible demon-like power. Okay, but he revealed his name. <clears throat> he revealed his name, man, uh, uh, to um to Moses, you know. He, he re-revealed it because really, you know, the scriptures say um, in Genesis, you know, that, that men began to call upon the name of the Lord. Um, but he but he established it, you know, with Moses and made it known when Israel was a nation. OK. And so continuing on, it says in the day when I chose Israel and lifted up mine hand unto the seed of the house of Jacob and made myself known unto them in the land of Egypt when I lifted up mine hand unto them saying I am your power I'm the excuse me Yahweh your power in the day that I lifted up mine hand unto them to bring them forth of the land of Egypt into a land that I had espied for them flowing with milk and honey which is in which is the glory of all lands and so the point being 
that the Lord uh, pretty much he had a special a special uh, uh, intention for us, man. OK. And, um, you know, when we consider that our people pretty much are in the position that we're in because we have shunned the Lord, that should make us have a mind to repent. OK, like the scriptures say, repent ye therefore and be converted. OK. And that's ultimately believing in Yahweh Shai. Revelation 2 and 4. Let's see here. I'll start at uh, verse 3. Actually, hold on. Verse 2. It says, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil and how and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and has found them liars and has borne and has patience and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted so if we still have fight in us we should be proclaiming the names of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai we should be constantly uh, uh, focused and zoned in on what his will is on the earth okay because we are we are espoused to him, right? We are waiting for the pretty much the 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 um, marriage supper of the Lamb, to where to where Yahweh Shai pretty much marries us back to the heavenly Father. Well, guess what? That's gonna that's gonna require obedience, man. Okay, obedience to the Most High's will again. So it says. Verse four, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. So, you know, ultimately, our first love should be this truth. And, and, and to fall away from that. That's, you know, that's an offense. You know, what I mean, how should I say he has some has some against that? OK, so it says, remember where remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen and repent. And do the first works. What are the first works? The first works is the is the ministry, you know. And so, keeping Yahweh Bashim Shai at the forefront of our mind should always be um, a priority, you know. And it's a life. This is a lifestyle. This isn't a fad or a trend. Okay, this is a way of life, a heritage, dedication. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and end it off on that. With that, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Kakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and peace and salutations to the elect. Shalom.